is something that is very important in the life of every Christian. An altar. When we talk about an altar, it is the meeting place between heaven and earth. When God creates covenant and where someone that is a human being offers either sacrifices or gifts. Hallelujah. So when we talk about an altar, it is a place where God meets his children. And where covenant is established, where covenant is what established. Beloved, we have so many types of covenant in the Bible. And all these covenants came as a result of an order that was erected to the Lord. We have the Abrahamic covenant, we have the Mosaic covenant, we have the priestly covenant, we have the Davidic covenant, and so on and so on. So, beloved, when we talk about As we all know, it is a formal agreement between two or more parties where they agree to do something. And what I want you to know is that before you can build an order to the Lord, first of all, you need to have a covenant with God. And every child of God by birth has got a covenant with God. Now it is up to us for us to renew the covenant. So covenant here is different from the normal promise, what I want you to know is the covenant is different from a promise. So every child of God has got a covenant. So what we need to do is to renew our covenant as a child of God before the covenant can work for us. So when you read Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, somebody should read it for me. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1. Yes. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country. Get out of your country. Your relatives. From your relatives. And your father's And from your father's house. And go to a land that I will show you. Verse 2. Verse 2. I will give you many descendants. I will give you, verse 2. I will make your definition. I will give you many descendants. Okay, verse 2. Yes. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous. I will bless you and make your name famous. And for me. I will bless those. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who are. change 
your mind that I will not do it. Once we enter the covenant, that is all. Before you can break a covenant, you need to pass through some processes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But with promise, you can just, you know, decide to change it. Like a man has seen a woman. Oh, please, I will marry you. Oh, wow, great. The person can go out with you, do everything with you. Since it is just a promise, the person can just opt out any time. He or she or Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But why is the person bring you to the altar? Bring you to the altar. Where the marriage, you know, vows are read. Where the, you know, the ring are being inserted into your hallelujah. That makes it what? A covenant. So it is not easy for you to just get up and say, oh, uh, let us, you know, divorce. No, you need to pass through a process. And if I promise, I told you, oh, I will marry you. You two are two things. Also, in the end, I don't think we can continue. So please, take your way. I will sort out. Take my way. That is a promise. So what I want you to know is that a covenant is legally what? Binding agreement between two or more parties. Since it is legally binding, it is not easy to opt out from a covenant. So when God first God Abraham, that get out of your father's house from your country to a land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, I will make your name famous, I will bless those who bless you, I will bless those who curse you. God was trying to say, Abraham, you need to do something in order to change this promise to a covenant for it to materialize. So for you, to make your covenant with God valid, you need to erect what we call order. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So what you are not enjoying with God is a covenant which has not been renewed. You need to renew your covenant. Amen. But when you read Genesis chapter 22, verse 15, Genesis 22, verse 15, Genesis chapter 22, verse 15, someone should read it for me. Well, I can read it. The angel of the Lord caught Abraham from heaven the second time and said, I swear by myself, declare the Lord that because you have not withheld your son, your only begotten son from me, I swear by myself, declare the Lord that because you have done this thing, I will surely, verse 17, bless you. I will surely. Bless you. So every covenant is sealed with an oath. Every covenant is sealed with an oath. So God was trying to tell you that what I told you first at Genesis chapter 12 was just a promise. Was just a promise. But now, because you have sacrificed, because you have built an altar to me, it is no more a promise again, but now it is what? A covenant. So I swear by myself. So every covenant is sealed with heart and oath. So that is why we exchange marriage vows here. That even in sickness, I will marry you. And the woman will say, yes. <laughs> in sickness, I will marry you. And the man will say, yes. But oh, in sickness, in poverty, I will take you as my beloved husband. Wow. It's a covenant. 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 So every covenant is sealed with an oath. So that was that was why God said, "I swear by myself." And it was something there was nobody greater than God for God to refer to. That was why He said, "I swear by myself." There is nobody greater than Him. That is why He said, "I swear by myself." That in blessing, I will bless you. This covenant. And beloved, one thing I want you to know is that. Our God is faithful when it comes to the covenant agreement. Because I said covenant, covenant is an agreement between two or more parties. So each party has what we call obligation, responsibilities to perform in a covenant agreement. Each party has got an obligation, responsibility, something to play in 
order to make the covenant agreement valid and effective. And our covenant with God, our covenant with God, one thing about him is that he is always faithful, faithful, faithful to him. He is part of the covenant. But it is up to us as believers, Christians, to also be faithful and play our part. For God to bless us. Amen. Amen. And what I want you to know is that if it is a covenant, there is a punishment when one party fails to fulfill his or her part of the covenant agreement. If it is a covenant, there is a punishment attached when one party decides not to perform his part of the covenant. There is a punishment. So if you ask a reward that is attached as you receive. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And one thing we have to know is that God is always, um, this is still again, God is always faithful to his part of the covenant agreement. He is faithful to his part of the covenant agreement. Let's read something in the book of Numbers 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. The Bible said that Lord is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should repent. Whatever he has said, he will do it. And whatever he has spoken, he will make it good. Numbers 23, verse 19. So God will never change his mind about the covenant that he has with his children. He will never change his mind. And he will never repent. So it is up to us as believers to perform our part diligently. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let's read Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. This quotation is very important. God was saying something here to his children. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17. I read. Let, let me start from verse 16. Someone should read the verse 16 for me. Verse 16. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation to them and the end of all strife. So as I said, there was nobody greater than God. For God to refer. So he said, I swear by myself. Verse 18. Verse 18. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. When we talk about the immutability of our God, something that God cannot change from it. Something that God cannot change from it. So it is impossible for God to lie. I'm talking about the covenant agreement. It is impossible for our God to lie. There are two things about God. One, it is impossible for him to lie. So that's why the Bible says, let all men be liars and only our God be true. It got to a time that the Bible says the people, the Roman, the, the people of Roman, they were asking Paul that what about God. Would that change his faithfulness? And God said, no. No, nothing can change the faithfulness of God. Whether you believe it or not, God is still God. So let God be true. And every man be what? A liar. So there's nothing that can change the faithfulness of our God. Whether you believe in him or not, he is still the creator of the ends of the earth. He is still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He is still the unchangeable God. He is still the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He who was, who is, and who is to, uh, who is to die. Oh, hallelujah. And so there is nothing that can change our God. If it, your own belief cannot change Him. So if you believe Him, He is still God.
if you don't believe in him, he is still what? So the Bible says there is two immutable things. Something that God cannot change. One, he cannot lie about his covenant that he has with his children. He can never lie about that covenant. And two, whatever he has said, that we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. So whatever he has said in his covenant agreement, the Bible is saying he will make it come to pass in your life. That is the meaning. That is the second part. So first, he cannot lie. Second, whatever he has said about us, he will make it happen in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So that's the things that two things, two immutable things about God. First, he cannot lie. To whatever he has said, he is faithful that he will make it happen. God bless you this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, beloved, in order for you to be part of the covenant agreement, one, you need to build an altar. That's our main thing. You need to build what? An altar. You need to build an altar. That's how they built an altar. Or built an altar. And we have so many types of altars. As I said, we have an altar of prayer. An altar of sacrifice, but this morning we will talk about the altar of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice. Next week we will continue with the part two of an altar of sacrifice. And we will get to know that Jesus Christ was the last. Let me end there because next week we will, we will move there. Building an altar of sacrifice. Let us look at the two types of altars. We have quantity altar. And we have what we call evil order. This one we are talking about evil order or evil orders. So when we talk about orders, let me explain again. An evil order, an evil order is a place of false worship where men offer worship and sacrifices to gods and evil spirits. So when we talk about evil orders, it is a place.
by virtue of our birth, we have evil orders fighting against us. All Africans, because of what our ancestors did, our forefathers did, we have evil orders fighting against us. And this evil orders, it takes something to break the order. And that is sacrifice. That is an offering. Some of us, we have orders of, you know, orders that, that, that fight against our marriages. Some of us in our families, we have orders that fight against our marriages. Others are poverty. Others are premature death. Others are diseases and sicknesses. But this morning, your offering will bring an end to every altar that has been erected in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Of if you believe, shout a big amen. And put your hands together for the name of the Lord. And beloved, because of the influence in some of us, our families, we are suffering in life. We get real what? Suffering in life. Things are not working as they should be. Our finances are bad. Our marriage lives, in fact, we are struggling as a result of an evil water that is fighting against us. So when you become a Christian, as I said, it is not automatic that you have entered or your covenant has been activated, you need to activate, you need to renew your covenant with God in order to break certain orders in your family. That is why I'm talking about this important topic, evil orders. Evil orders. And these orders has become something like a generational or transgenerational, you know, cases for some of us. Something that you are not aware of, but you are facing the consequences. There are a lot of things that we are not aware of it, but we are facing the consequences. What your grandparents did, you are now facing the consequences. What somebody in your family did, you are now facing the consequences. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We were praying and we saw something in our family. I said, wow. See, you must tell me. If you don't break it, there is no way you can move forward. So, at times, you might think that we are living in a physical world. So, everything is about physical, in the spiritual realms. The path of life starts in the spiritual realms. But many at times, we Christians forget that our battle is a spiritual battle. We only concentrate, focus, on the physical part. Forgetting that man composed of three important things. One, the spirit, the soul, and the body. And always the spirit and the soul work together. So we talk about an evil spirit or evil waters. What they do is to fight against your spirit and your soul. And to materialize, to manifest in the physical realms to fight against your body. So what our grandparents did, what our you know ancestors did, wasn't something that they did physically. It was a spiritual thing. And it's fight against us spiritually. And we are having the impact in the physical realms. So I was saying, before you can become victorious yesterday, in this life, there are some orders that you need to bring in the spirit for you to enjoy life to the fullness. But many at times, we only focus on the physical part. The physical part. Forgetting that we are spirit and soul. Because when the spirit is no more, when the spirit is no more, you are nothing. And when your soul departs, my brother, my sister, nobody will even come close to you. Even your own children will not even come close to you. Even your own wife, your own husband, will not even come close to you. So if you 
if you have something to do, you need to talk about your spirit and your soul. That is the most important thing in life, the spirit and the soul. So when we talk about if what is, we are talking about the spirit and the soul. So that is why Jesus said, if you get the whole world and even you lose your soul, oh then, it is good that if you were not, you were not born. It is good that you were not born. So I will say this, why most philosophers are saying the important part of life is the spirit. So there is this debate, whether the spirit comes first or whether the you know, physical comes first. And some are saying, everything about this world is about the spiritual world. So I will say we have a idealistic view and we have, you know, realistic view. So the realistic view is about the physical world. Physical world, they don't think about the spiritual world. But the idealistic view is about the spirit, about the spirit, about the spirit. That is what we believers believe. And the Bible says, even though we walk in the flesh, but we do not rest after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. To the prayers of what? Strongholds. So our battle in life is the spiritual we need to focus on evil what is fighting against us because of what I am summarizing we will continue this evil what is that's why we need to fight against any evil what is fighting against us so Paul says something that be, uh, uh, beloved be strong in the love and the power of his word of his mind be strong in the Lord because for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we fight against spiritual wickedness. We fight against principalities. We fight against things that we cannot use our eyes to see. There are things fighting against us in life. Sometimes you might think that life is normal, normal, physical. Who told you? I was praying about somebody. And in fact, God revealed the family to me. I said, oh no. I lift my hands up. I go your way. And I also go out my way. Wow, spiritual thing. Don't joke with it. Spiritual thing. Don't tell us that I am a God. I will go and break that covenant. But you can't break it. But you are just, you know, mouth mouthing your, <laughs> yourself. I will go and break that covenant. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you say it, beloved, there are certain things that we don't fight against you. Please. Stop there and pass another way. Hallelujah. Amen. God has shown there a lot of uh, men and uh, a lot of women. So I'm talking about the same young men. You share my say, Hallelujah. Uh, yes. So when you say that, ha, don't go there. Spiritual thing. Don't talk with it. Spiritual thing. That, oh, I can fight against. You can fight against. If you use, you have to be able to fight. The one in your family, you have to be able to fight. So there are some families that we don't have. Go! And God will reveal to you if waters. Two if waters coming together. You know the name? You call it Mecca evil waters. Hallelujah. Two if waters coming together. So don't go there, don't fight. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Oh, may the Lord bless you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Because of our time. So beloved, know that we have evil waters fighting against us as Christians and as children of God. And there is something that we can use to, to break these waters. Next week we will talk about it. There is something that we can use to break against these waters. There is something that we can use to fight against these waters. And we will set an example from the Bible. It was Numbers chapter 23. We used Numbers chapter 23 and we used a lot of you know Bible references to support this topic. May the Lord bless you this morning. May the Lord bless you this morning. May the Lord bless you this morning. Uh, the Lord receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you this morning. Do you know what the blessing of the Lord does? The blessing of the Lord cancel evil orders. The blessing of the Lord cancel evil what what is may the Lord bless you this morning Amen. may the Lord bless you this morning Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Amen. and the evil what is fighting against
against you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May it come to an end. May it come to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord fight the battle for you. May the Lord protect you. May the Lord make you a winner always in all battles of life. May the Lord be with you. May his favor go with you this week. In Jesus' name.